Today I was uh, kind of bored and I was looking at my HTPC and I was thinking how I could improve it. Because this is my HTPC which I built a while back in the Silverstone uh, MLO3- MLO9B-E case. It's an HTPC case. It has a half slot graphics card in it which I put a GTX 1050, not a TI. Uh, it's just a 2GB model, it's not that fast, but I got a Ryzen 7 2700 on this B350 motherboard from Gigabyte. It's the AB350N ITX uh, Wi-Fi motherboard. It's not the greatest ITX uh, AM4 motherboard, but it was one of the only AM4 motherboards that's ITX that has a heatsink over the uh, SoC VRM, and I was using it with an APU before, so I wanted a motherboard with a heatsink on a VRM. Uh, but I have some problems with it. Now this does run just fine stock, the motherboard can handle it and the cooler, which I've taken it off because I wasn't actually planning to do a video on this but I decided to just now, is the Noctua NH L12S, not the L9, it's the L12S so I replaced the fan with the Noctua NFA12X25, it's the new best fan from Noctua and it works just fine if it's stock. And even an overclock, it's sort of fine. I managed to overclock this to 4 gigahertz at about 1.3 volts. Maybe it's slightly less with the V droop, but this handles it just fine. Temperatures are in the 80 degrees range. But the problem that I'm having with this PC is that the VRMs, which do have a heatsink, albeit a very small heatsink on this Gigabyte motherboard, has some problems keeping it cool because the temperatures skyrocket to above 100 degrees. Sometimes I've seen it go like 120 degrees and stuff. Uh, and then eventually it shuts down if I keep a 100% load non-stop on this. Uh, because the VRMs just get too hot while the CPU is doing sort of fine. And I think the VRM heat is also affecting the CPU because the temperatures slowly climb as well. And this is all with the fans maxed out with the two 80mm Noctua NFA8 PWM fans on the side blowing air in and the cooler is blowing air out the top vent over here. Now I was just thinking could I improve the VRM temperatures by uh, changing the thermal pad which I'm pretty sure is pretty bad into a thermal paste. I know that sounds really stupid like who puts who puts thermal paste on VRM MOSFETs but I feel like I just wanted to try it out and see if it helps so <laughs> I guess that's what I'm doing in this video today. We'll put some thermal paste on motherboard VRMs and see if it helps temperatures. Maybe not because the heat sinks that small. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, let's start taking it apart and I've taken apart the cooler for now. Here we go.
Okay, so with the test up and running, you can see that the temperatures still get up to over 120 degrees and the CPU does eventually crash again at this settings, which is going to about 1.3 volts under load at 4 gigahertz. Uh, but the temperature is kind of leveled out in a 120 range, but it was also about 120 range before the thermal phase replacement, so I didn't look at this as much of an improvement really, and it still crashed. So the next thing to try is try and up the voltage, because back then, before the thermal phase change, if I up the voltage, either the CPU overheat or the VRM overheat even more, and eventually it crashed as well, and I can't really up the voltage. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I have tested this with the voltage increase slightly, so it goes to 1.32 volts under load, and the CPU survived, and although the temperatures crept up slightly, it's still under 90 degrees now, which is quite mind-blowing, because before that, I was going easily over 90 degrees at this kind of voltage levels with this cooler and overclock, and then eventually it'll crash because of heat as well, but apparently now the VRM temperatures stop climbing over 130 at this setting, and the CPU didn't climb over 90 degrees at, this, at, at these settings, so I think it kind of worked. So, uh, there you have it. As you've seen in the results, it still gets super toasty on the VRMs, it still gets over 120 degrees, which is what I was getting previously without putting thermal paste on between the MOSFETs and the heatsink. But the difference is that, although you might have seen the results just now that it's still really hot, it kind of stopped climbing below 130, so it doesn't keep going all the way above 130. And previously, I couldn't really get this Ryzen 7 2700 stable at 4 gigahertz uh, when I was still using the thermal paste because I was setting like 1.37 volts on the BIOS and it was dropping to like 1.3 volts under load because of V-droop and eventually it would just crash and the temperatures were still about that temperature like 120 something degree range and it would crash but I figured that, that right now after applying the thermal paste I tried to add more voltage because it seemed like the CPU ran a bit cooler so that was quite interesting I managed to increase the voltage to 1.41 volts on the BIOS, which means about 1.31, 1.32 volts under load for 4 GHz, which is uh, quite a lot of voltage actually, I think, because I'm running quite hot temperatures here on the CPU, but right now, after the thermal paste is applied, I could run that voltage at like about 1.32 volts under load, and the CPU would stay under 90 degrees still, and the MOSFETs wouldn't increase the temperature even more, it just stayed around like 127, 126 degrees, just like before with the lower voltage, and it didn't crash. Well, previously, if I tried increasing the voltage, either the CPU would thermal throttle above 90 degrees, or it would just crash because the VRM temperature skyrocketed. So, I think that, although it doesn't seem like it improves temps that much, I think it actually did improve like the heat flow of the MOSFETs to the heatsink and helped reduce the temperature on the CPU and the MOSFETs slightly when under increased voltages and it allowed me to run this Ryzen 7 2700 at a full 4 gigahertz on all cores right now so I think the conclusion is that on kind of like a Mythbuster kind of conclusion is that it's plausible not entirely uh, sure it actually works completely better than some thermal paste you get from the motherboard, but it's plausible that it did because it seemed like it made me able to run 4 gigahertz on all core on 8 cores on this Ryzen 7 2700. But yeah, uh, that's it for this short investigative video on putting thermal paste on your MOSFETs. Uh, if you're having te te temperature problem problems on your VRM, you might want to try putting thermal paste, apparently. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching this video. And hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.